Congratulations, or thanks for coming by to learn something. The first excerpt we're going to look at is Brahms uh, from his Symphony No. 4 in E minor, uh, the second movement. This excerpt, it begins at uh, 20 minutes and 33 seconds if you're watching a YouTube video with the score in it, uh, at the very least for that one. I highly recommend you give it a listen so you really know what's going on in the context around you. This excerpt, it's really the climax of the slow movement. Um, basically, the, the theme of it comes back as a fugue subject and it get pa gets passed around the orchestra quite a bit. Um, what that means for you in terms of playing this, uh, it's, it's a Brahms climax. So you're really allowed to pull out all the stops, um, really play it quite loudly, um, quite, quite full, um, as long as it's not too rough, maybe a little rough. Um, the biggest obstacle that you're really going to face in this one is, is fingerings. Um, I'd say because of that, you don't have to worry so much about dynamics. Make sure it's very full all across the board, um, although try to follow the, the shape of the phrasing, and really just make sure that you're saving something, you're holding something back for measure 84 when it does turn into fortissimo. Uh, one more thing about the sound uh, in measure 76, that is the theme of the beginning move, uh, of this movement. Um, as it's introduced by the horns, make sure it's very, very long, very legato, very connected, uh, more so than uh, almost anything else in this excerpt. The first fingering uh, challenge I would say there is is measure 77. This is a bit of a tricky fingering, um, and you will probably also notice that this excerpt, it is slow enough that you're going to have some freedom, some options to move around in. That being said, I did try to, uh, to avoid any four to four shifts, even though that might be the obvious fingering choice here. Um, I just felt like doing in context and in tempo is, is actually a little bit dangerous. Um, so I chose instead to do one on the D and reach up. This keeps everything more or less in A position. It helps it stay connected, uh, but it's really not a, a perfect fingering. I would consider it, um, well, there never is a perfect fingering, but it's just one option that I would uh, like to share. Um, feel free to find whatever fits in your hand better. Everyone's hand is different and that's okay. Um, in the next bar, in measure 78, you can do all of this in first position. I chose as the line is descending uh, to stay on the G string uh, by shifting uh, here. <laughs> the sound a little bit more. Again, that's really just a matter of preference. Generally try to avoid any uh, larger shifts after the 32nd notes in the dotted 16th 32nd note rhythm, um, beginning one before E. Um, you can still do some shifts, but just make sure they're very secure, like a two to one or even a two to two. <laughs> reason for this being you really want the 32nd note to connect to the following dotted 16th note, not the one uh, before it. There is a little bit of space there. Contrast this with the 16th note, 32nd rest, 32nd note rhythm. This begins in measure 82. Uh, they are, of course, the same rhythm, but I believe the writing, uh, the writing of it differently was intentional. Uh, the dotted rhythm should be more connected, more melodic, um, the one with the rest should be more separated and more bass liney. You can also notice that there's generally larger intervals in between 
uh, when the rest is added, and they're more connected when it's the dot. I chose to uh, represent this, I suppose, by uh, hooking the bowing when it's dotted, and uh, separating it when it has the rest. It kind of gets a, a heavier sound that way. Uh, also a note about the fingering um, in measure 82, I did decide to uh, reach for the octave between the F sharps. Um, this is not maybe necessary uh, if you feel like you can do that string crossing quickly enough. Um, just be aware that it is a little bit dangerous because you have to cross uh, the G string. Never lose sight of the fact that the eighth note is what gets uh, the beat in this excerpt. Uh, it is very slow, very steady, um, but that just means that you have to bring out the intensity more in your own sound and vibrato rather than trying to speed it up anywhere. In particular places I feel like that are dangerous because of this, uh, the first measure of this excerpt you have a 16th pickup. Note that that is not a 32nd, unlike most of the other pickups. In this excerpt it is a little bit longer. Uh, in measure 78, the downbeat, it is an eighth note followed by a rest, so make sure that you're feeling one, two, and um, that's an easy place, I, I feel like, uh, to rush over. And really, any other places where you have faster rhythms and then an eighth note, um, make sure that you're reading these eighth notes as beats. Uh, I think a good example there would be measure 83, after all of this business, make sure that those are, uh, of course, the beat once again. Finally, uh, make sure that you're taking the fortissimo with a staccato in 84. Um, very literally, it should be a very short stroke, but very, very jam-packed with, with power. Um, you might notice, if you have listened to the recordings, that uh, some orchestras actually slow down here a bit. Um, I would say just because it is not printed in your excerpt here, it's nowhere uh, written in the music, I, I would say don't do this. Uh, try to keep it as steady as possible. Um, but just make sure that the bow stroke again... <laughs> There's no wasted effort, I guess is one way of putting it. Everything is just in the string and, and very full sounding. With that, that's really about all I have to say about this excerpt. As far as Brahms excerpts go, this one is fairly straightforward. Um, it's not uh, terribly melodic um, like the second symphony excerpt is. Uh, where you really have to worry about connecting notes, um, making beautiful shifts. Uh, this one you just want actually quite a bit more, more clean, again, because it is a fugue section. So that being said, make sure that you're committing to a fingering uh, as early as possible, sticking to it, um, and just practicing it so that it, it works uh, for the best that your hand it can. So thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.